I'm uh, Mike McAlpine. I'm, I'm assistant professor of mechanical engineering at Princeton University, and we work on the interface between materials, specifically nanomaterials and biology. Some of the tools that we use are some of the standard uh, nanofabrication tools in order to make the nanomaterials in the first place. And the biology uh, we often do with collaborators. And more recently, we've incorporated a new tool, which is a 3D printing tool, which is, allows us to basically uh, incorporate all these different functionalities, the electronics and the biology, into a single tool to print something in three dimensions. We recently uh, made uh, what we like to call a bionic ear. Uh, which is an ear that was 3D printed. Uh, we printed the cells, we printed the electronics using a 3D printer, and we cultured the, the cells into tissue, cartilage tissue, uh, which had the electronics embedded into it. And the ear can hear from frequencies, including human, uh, normal human hearing, which is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and then beyond that from the megahertz to the gigahertz range. So we call it a bionic ear because it may provide superhuman uh, capabilities to hear beyond the normal frequency range. No origami uh, required. Uh, it's, mo it's something where you, you design it in the first place using a, a program called a CAD, uh, which is a pretty standard program, but you design it using a CAD software that allows you to design things in three dimensions and specify uh, the individual components. So that way you can print things that are multifunctional, for example, biology and electronics, uh, and do it in a layer by layer process so they're interwoven into each other in three dimensions. This ear works uh, a slightly different from a hearing aid. So a normal hearing aid actually amplifies the sound for people who have uh, difficulty picking up uh, low-level sounds. And uh, there's a more advanced type of uh, implant called a cochlear implant, which is mostly for people where they basically bypass the normal hearing uh, uh, organs and go directly to the cochlea, which, connects, uh, which has hair cells which connect to the, the brain. And so this is more of something where the coil can actually pick up uh, frequencies beyond the normal range of human hearing and including the, nor the normal range of human hearing. And it can actually pick up electronic uh, uh, signals. So you can imagine, for example, right now you have a cell phone which is electronic device and then it has a speaker built into it and that speaker basically transmits acoustic sounds to your ear which then uh, converts that from acoustic back to electrical which goes to your brain. And so one of the concepts here is you can imagine just having this coil and having direct electrical to electrical transduction so you can skip the middleman, not have to worry about speakers and microphones, and just have humans be uh, electronic humans that can hear electronic signals directly. But the advantage of 3D printing is you can think beyond the normal two-dimensional uh, electronics and normal uh, two-dimensional biology, think to three dimensions, so have a three-dimensional ear, but also we have a three-dimensional cochlea, which is actually a helical structure which protrudes from the ear, and you can imagine, and we actually have the electronics wrapped around that cochlea as well, so you can imagine being able to feed that, like you do with a cochlear implant, into the cochlea and making those connections there. Most uh, cochlear implants have about 22 electrodes, which go down the length of that uh, electrode wire there. So there's gonna have to be some improvements in 3D printing to go from one electrode like we have now to 22, but that's something that I think one can easily imagine doing as 3D printing improves in resolution. I saw someone give a talk, his name is Hod Lipsum at Cornell, and he was showing uh, that people were putting flour into the 3D printer and different food coloring. So they're able to print something like a muffin and then when you cut the muffin and you look at the half of the muffin, it actually had a letter written in, in a different food coloring on the inside of the muffin. So that's what 3, the 3D printing gives you. It gives you something which can be internal, uh, it, it, not just on the surface of the muffin, but something actually internal to it that you can't see from the outside. And so I think that that's actually what biology is. Biology is naturally three-dimensional and electronics are naturally two-dimensional, but one can imagine going to the third dimension, adding a new dimension to the, to, to the electronics so that it can merge more seamlessly with the biology, and that's what I think I'm most excited, excited about. The printing itself uh, it can be done in a few hours, and you want it to be that way because uh, you don't want the, the cells to die before you have a chance to culture them. Uh, so it can be done within a few hours. In fact, the printer that we purchased was only $1,000 and we had a high school student do the CAD design. So it's something that can be done uh, right now on the cheap, but of course, you know, it, it's a, also a very, fairly uh, rudimentary ear. So to do something more complicated, we, we need to get a, a better printer, and it's kind of an interesting thing because we would like to be able to purchase a more expensive printer, uh, but in fact, a lot of these printers, they, the companies only allow you to, to use 
uh, uh, specialized uh, polymers in the printer, proprietary polymers, and because one problem with 3D printers is they can jam pretty easily. And if you try to use kind of the weird stuff that, that we're working with, uh, then you'll probably jam it and then they won't come and fix your $250,000 3D printer. So that was actually, it made sense for us to do the cheaper printer. But I think as, more, as we uh, get these concepts out there, I think that these companies will find ways uh, to allow more, uh, a, a more exotic materials in their printers. So one of the big challenges in tissue engineering is printing organs that have vasculature. So the nice thing about the ear as a first step is the ear is a fairly simple organ where it doesn't have a lot of vasculature. And for regular tissue engineering, there's no real way to introduce that vasculature. But 3D printing provides a route. There's actually several people working on printing vasculature. And so one can imagine that, that, would, uh, that 3D printing actually has advantages on the tissue, pure tissue engineering side and being able to print an organ and vasculature. And then if you can do that, then you can imagine uh, more complex organs and bionic organs that one could print. I think that uh, helping people is, uh, should be the end goal of any scientific project. I mean, science is funded by the public, and so ultimately it should go back in some way and help the public. I think even fundamental projects uh, have the ability to eventually down the line uh, translate into something which can uh, help people. And so what we like to do is, is we like to bridge that gap between uh, the fundamental and the applied and try to fill in the space in between in order to uh, bridge the gap between the fundamental and the applied and try to push something more towards uh, human people actually uh, benefiting their lives.